Charity and Devin. <laughs> we hope you are watching. We're more glad you're back. And uh, we're praying for you daily. And Grandma B, as you know. Grandma. 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 No, Grandma. Grandma. Granny. <laughs> Granny <Daddy> says. Grandma. <laughs>
I want you to know, man, I am so excited about the people in this church that sing. I, I, I think about all the different folks that we have, Matt and Amanda. I think about Brother, uh, well, I was going to say Brother Eric, but I don't know that Brother Eric sings that much. But I, I hear him every once in a while back there. And if you all got the chance to hear him, you'd think that he had a pretty good voice. But he sings pretty good. Uh, but I just think about Christy, and I think about uh, just everybody, Kyle, and all the folks in our church that are so willing and so quick to, to volunteer to sing at the compulsion of Brother David. Aren't you glad Brother David urges these people to sing? I, I think about how impressed I am at their ability, and then I think about their heart. Now, folks, I've heard a lot of people sing a lot of songs in my time, and you have two that are very talented and very capable of, of just absolutely tickling the ears and, and making you really just be impressed with their singing ability. But what is different about these folks that sing here in this church is you know their heart and you know what they're singing is coming from right down here. I appreciate you guys that do that. I appreciate our choir. I appreciate Brother David. I appreciate uh, our, our congregation as we sing praises to him. Uh, I hope that you don't. Uh, I hope that you don't ever sit there and take it for granted. That you don't ever just think, "Well, we can always sing." I, I, I hope that you realize just how how important it is that that music is to our worship. But oh, how special it is! Oh, how precious it is that God, in turn, responds to us not with song but with that love that only He can give as we offer up worship to Him. This morning, we're going to talk about love. It's Valentine's Day. See a lot of red out there. See a lot of people wearing red. We're going to talk about love today. We're going to talk about what uh, a difference God's love makes in our lives and, and how that we, too, should be sharing that love. But I want you to, I want to ask you this. How many in this room really grab hold of this concept that God's love is so great we cannot comprehend it? Raise your hand if you understand that. God's love is so great that you and I cannot comprehend it. We're going to read about that in just a moment. The verse is very clear. It says it is beyond our imagination how much God loves us. Beyond our imagination. You know, I, 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 when I fell in love with Derek, man, I, I, I thought I fell head over heels in love with her and and thought that nobody could love anybody anymore. And then all of a sudden, just uh, 10 years later, Darren and I, we celebrated the birth of our daughter, Addie, and man, I wrapped her up and loved her. I thought, man, there's no way I could ever love anybody anymore. And then just two years later, here comes Harrison, and I thought, man, I couldn't love anybody anymore. And I just think about all those folks in my life that at good times, I think, man, how can I love anybody anymore? And I love that family unit that I have, my wife, my two kids. How, how can I love anybody any more than, than that? And how can anybody love anybody else more than that? Yet when it comes to God, the love that I have for my wife, the love that I have for my kids, the love that I have for my parents and my brothers and my sister and all the folks in my life, all the love wrapped up together pales in comparison to the love that God has me. And the same is true for you and your life. This morning, if you come to this place and you feel unloved, I hope before you leave here this morning that you might grab hold of the truth that God loves you and He loves you beyond imagination. With that being said, I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And I want us to look this morning at God's love. I want us to really grab hold of what God's love is saying to us. I want us to grab hold and comprehend the things that God would have us to comprehend. Because even though His love may be unimaginable, even though His love may be beyond what I can even comprehend, I want you to know there are parts of it that God wants me to comprehend because in turn it will clarify just how important I am to God. So with that being said, Ephesians chapter 3, would you stand as we begin reading with verse 14? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, we begin reading and it says this. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be, uh, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, 
being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ with which passeth passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Brother Steve, would you lead us in prayer this morning?
God has loved me the entire time that there's been existence. God loves me. And he will love me as long as there will continue to be existence. God said, I love you even before the beginning of time through the end of time. I love you. The length of it never stops. Because you have to remember, he is the beginning and the end. And he loves me from the beginning and he loves me through to the end. The length of it never ceases. His love continues for me every single day. That tells me that he's not going to get tired of me, John. That tells me that Brother Steve, he, he's not going to just say, you know what, I give up on that old fella. If God loves me, I'm just going to let him go and do his thing. God says that he loves me from the beginning to the end. That's pretty powerful. I know that in life, sometimes we put time frames on our love, don't we? I'll give you an example. There was a time that I used to love the men so I sort of fallen away from that now because, well, really and truly, there ain't much to love about it. ain't too good. So, you know, you start falling That's the type of love that we have. That's not the type of love that God has. God's love doesn't waver just because we're not winners. You may be sitting here this morning thinking, well, Tim, I, I, you know, God, I can see why you love me when I was younger. I was lovable back then. I've gotten older and I'm cranky and I'm, I'm honorable and uh, uh, honorary and all this. And, and why would they love me now? Yet God still loves you. Went up from the beginning to the end. Infinity upon not only the breath, not only the wind, but the death. I really want to pause here for a moment because this finds us all many times. The death of his love. That means I may be at the lowest of the low of the low in my life. I may be finding myself miserable, depressed, discouraged, frustrated, whatever you may find, the lowest of the low in your life. That is where God is. I don't have to go through that time alone. God loves me so much that in the midst of the lowest of the low of the low, God meets me right there and says, Tim, just because things are not right in your life, just because things may seem like they're a mess right now, just because you may feel like the whole world is against you, I'm right here with you, and I love you. I've not stopped loving you. I will continue to love you until we get out of this step and we get back on the mountaintop. I love you. Miss Christie sang that song this morning. She sang, I couldn't help but think of this part of this verse. The death. When I'm at the lowest. God, when it's the darkest. God, when I'm sitting there and I'm struggling because... The people around me have just given up on me. God, I'm looking for some kind of answer. And God, the only answer I can find is you and your love. Now, folks, when everybody else cashes out and says, I'm done with you, Jesus comes on the scene and says, I've never forgotten you. And I'm not going to quit you now. Now, that is love. Have you ever blamed God for things in your life? You ever sat there and you just get so low that maybe you start literally accusing God of things? Now, if you've not ever been there, I, I'm thankful for that, but I'll tell you, there have been times that I've gotten there on my own, right? There have been times where I've looked around and I've said, God, if you love me so much, why'd you let me get here? God, if you love me so much, why'd you let this happen in my life? God, if you love me so much, why is it that you just left me here all by myself? And all along, God is whispering in my ear, and I'm not listening. I'm ignoring. I'm handling it on my own rather than looking to, to the fact that God's still with me. But I, I'm just handling it on my own, and I'm not hearing him say, Tim, I'm still here. You know, you get to that point. You just start saying, God, it's your fault. God, I wouldn't be here if you love me. God, I wouldn't be here if you really and truly cared about me. God, you'd have me on the mountaintop. I wouldn't be in the valley. God, if you really loved me, I wouldn't be struggling right now. I'd be living the life of a dream. I'd have life and I'd have it more nothing. Where are you, God? Why aren't you here? And then finally, thanks be to the Lord, something will click. All of a sudden, I'll look and I'll realize at the deepest, darkest moment in my life, 
Guess who's there? Jesus is there. You know what he tells me? Tim, I'm not going anywhere. By the way, just to give you a heads up, if we go a little bit further, and it gets a little bit darker, and it gets a little bit worse, you know, don't ever say it gets any worse, because it will. If it gets a little bit worse, guess what, Tim? I'm going to be there too. He can't get deep enough for me to abandon you. He can't get deep enough for me to quit loving you. He can't get deep enough for me to turn my back on you. Tim, if you'll just listen to me, you'll see that I've been there the whole way through and I'm not giving up on you. And you don't need to give up on my love in your life either. You know, it's usually at that point in time that you, Brother Steve, you sit there and you start feeling silly, don't you? God, how can I have that shit? God, how could I ever convince myself that you would stop loving me? You know why? It's unimaginable. Our mind can't comprehend. Our mind can't wrap itself around it. Why? Because everybody else has abandoned us. We just assume God's going to abandon us too. And guess what? God is still right there. I want to give you an example of that. I, and I, I really, uh, please don't get mad for me pausing on this one. People have heard this first. Because I think a lot of us find ourselves in this place a lot of times. And we need to really grab hold of the fact that God never ceases to love us. But I'll give you an example in the Bible where this plays out. There's a man in the Bible who is standing guard of a couple of folks in jail. That is Paul and Silas. All of a sudden, Paul and Silas, in the middle of the night, begin to sing and to pray and praise and just worship God right there in the middle of the jail cells. This guy standing guard, he's commissioned to stand right there, not allow anything to happen for these people to never get escape. He's, he's guilty himself if he allows them to escape, guilty to the point that they'll kill him. And so he's standing guard. And all of a sudden, an earthquake hits. These men are worshiping and praising God in an earthquake hit. And all of a sudden, the, get, the, get, the doors of these jail cells open up. Literally, everybody is free to go, if you will. This guy looks, and he in his heart says this. Surely to goodness, everybody has run out. And I'm sitting here, and no doubt, that I'm going to be held accountable. Rather than letting them persecute me, rather than letting them... Uh, and literally interrogate me and, 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 and just literally uh, take advantage of me in the course of that. I'm just going to take my life and he was ready to kill himself as a result of what had just unfolded and what just happened. Pretty low point in his life, wasn't it? Pretty dark moment in his life. By the way, just let you know he was lost. He was lost. A dark, dark moment. No hope no possibility of escape. No possibility of, of getting this problem fixed in his life. He thought for sure it was over. So he's ready to kill himself. And then out of the, out of the darkness comes this voice and says, Hey, don't do yourself any harm. We're still right here. The Bible says that Paul and Silas addressed him. And I want you to know something. That wasn't Paul and Silas that spoke to him. It might have been the voice, but it was God through Paul and Silas that spoke to this man and said, wait a minute, I still love you. Wait a minute, things aren't done with you. Wait a minute, I've not neglected you. The love that sent Jesus to, to the cross is still the same love that still resides in this jail. And these two men are going to start talking to you and sharing with you how you can become a Christian, how you can be forgiven of your sins, how you can find hope in the darkest, deepest part of your life. So God spoke to these men, to this man. This man, rather than killing himself, took these men home with him to talk to his family. Folks, I want you to know that God has not quit on you. He's not quit loving you. He's not quit giving you hope in your life. He's not quit giving you answers for your life. And though it may be dark and dim, and though you may feel like that you're overwhelmed, I'm here to tell you that there is still hope in Jesus Christ. There's still hope in His love. And this morning, if you're here and you find yourself struggling this morning and you feel like you're alone, I'm here to tell you that the same love that's waiting for the person to come and be saved is the same love that's waiting for you to come and get out of the darkness. That invitation is going to be for you here in just a moment. He's got the breath, the wind, the death, the 
then we get to the high. Brother Steve, I love this because I love it comes right after the death. The death is where you find the darkness. The death is where you find misery. The death is where you find no hope. But then we get to the height. And the height is where we find Jesus elevating us. The height is where God looks down, he reaches down, he grabs hold of me, and pulls me out of the dark mire and says, Tim, come on up to the heavenly chorus. Come on up and let's sing together. Come on up and let's sing the joy. Come on up and let's sing the victory. Come on up. I have given you a victory that will be in your life that though you don't see now, it is coming. I was sitting there telling some folks this morning about having those moments in your life where all of a sudden you get news and, and it sort of shakes you to the core. And I, I sort of thought about that in, in my life and, and I had had one experience where a doctor came in and said, don't know about what you're going to do in your life. Don't know if you're going to make it. This may be the last day that you spend on this earth. And I remember sharing with this person, I said, you know, when you hear that news, you'd expect to fall apart. You'd expect to just say, wait a minute, this is crazy. You'd expect to sit there and start worrying about a lot of different things. But for whatever reason, this doctor gives this information to me, and I look at this doctor, and I said, okay. And Brother Johnny, do you know what went through my mind? I can't wait to see what the streets of Hill looks like. I can't wait to see what my mansion looks like. I can't wait to ask Noah what it was like. I can't wait to get with Moses and say, man, I'm so glad that you gave me a message to get encouraged when people seem to knock you down. I couldn't wait to get to heaven and talk to Brother Paul and say, God love you. you got the same Jesus I got, and I'm so thankful you're here. I'm so thankful I'm here. And I want you to know that there are people in my generation that receive Christ because of you. I remember thinking to myself, I can't wait to see the face of God. And then, about 12.30 that night, I remember saying to myself, Jesus, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to hear you <coughs> tell me how much you love me. And I hope and pray that I'll get the chance to tell you how much I love you. I know that you know. I already know that you already understand. But God, I can't wait to be able in my own voice to look at you and say, thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. Sure, that with this person, I said afterwards, I said, you know, a little bit later, I began to think, and I said, you know, God, you told me to make my petitions known to you. So, God, here's what I'd like. I'd like to be able to see my daughter grow up and get married. I'd like to see my son graduate high school and get into college. I'd like to see what you are going to unfold for them in their life. And God, though I'm not trying to change your plan, I know whatever your plan is, I'm sick to death about it. But God, you told me to make my petitions known. So if this is part of your will, God, I'm sharing with you my heart and my desire. And so sure enough, all the things played out. And, and you know, obviously, the, the things that they were concerned of never happened. And I remember just sitting there and thanking God, saying, God, I'm so thankful that in the midst of that news that I received, not only were you there, but you took my mind to a place that gave me victory. Took my mind to the height of your life. This morning, I would challenge you. You might be finding yourself in the depth of your soul. You might find yourself at the lowest of the low. My challenge to you this morning is this. Come to this altar. Bear those things to God this morning. Ask Him to shower and to pour out His love for you. So that as you are finding yourself there in the depth, that God might take you and elevate you to look at the height of His love. That which is still yet to come. That which is on the other side. That glory which God has prepared for you. That is what we need to be thinking about and giving thanks to this morning because that is what God's love does for you. That being said, I'm going to ask you to stand with your heads bowed and with your eyes closed. Right now, with heads bowed and with eyes closed, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. 
Number one, if you're here this morning and you're lost, can you really give a good value of reason why you wouldn't accept Jesus' love this morning? Would you really have an answer for that? Because I'm here to tell you that God is waiting for you right here at the altar with his love. This morning, you don't have to leave this place lost, but you can leave this place saved and in Christ's love. Oh, I pray that you'll come this morning. For the Christian this morning, you may find yourself at the lowest of the low. This morning, I would simply ask that you turn your heart over to Jesus and you let God elevate you to the height of his love. Whatever God leads you to do this morning, would you come? Father, I pray that you might just have your way during this invitation. God, I pray that you might just speak to every person in this room, touch every soul. Just reach down and grab hold of letting each person know your love and Father, your presence is here waiting for them. Bless us now, for only you can. For it's in your name we pray. With heads bowed and with eyes closed, would you come?
and God bless each and every one of you. I hope that you have a great Valentine's Day today. I hope and pray that you take time to ponder and think just how much it is that Jesus loves you, how much God loved you to send His Son to die for you. I'm going to ask Brother Johnny, would you dismiss us with a word of prayer? Don't forget to be praying hard for our church. A lot of things are moving and, and we're going in a positive direction. I'll share that with you. You're going to see a couple of changes in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the things that we're doing, of how that we're moving, and, and all the things that we're doing. But you be praying right now for our church that God might just bless us, and that as we go forward, that we might be doing all praise and honor and glory for everything that's done. Brother John. Dearly, Father, Lord, I come to you this morning, and Father, on Valentine's Day, as I said, I pray that you would just bless us and